Hello everyone, it's Yvonne back to do your bonus reading. Um, I've attempted this a couple of times. I'm going for my, probably about the fourth time this time due to everything sort of not working in my favour. <laughs> Sometimes it happens that way. All right, we're going to use the Muse Tarot for your reading. Um, I want to say to you that what's cracking reading was pretty awesome, but after it finished, I always throw the dice and have a look at um, because I'm learning, obviously, astrology. And I got Jupiter in the 4th and the 10th house, which is both talks about fame and fortune, embracing your fame. So I feel like it was really, really relevant to that reading. So if you want to have a look up Jupiter in the 4th and Jupiter in the 10th, that was what I threw after that particular reading. I always get something fairly accurate, but that one blew me away. All right, so if you really enjoyed the What's Cracking reading and you really felt it was relevant to you, look up those Jupiter in the 4th and 10th house. All right, so I've got the Four of Wands coming through. Now, the Four of Wands is a card that talks about stability. Fours are always about stability. They're about building a foundation. The Four of Wands is a little bit more than that, though, because it represents the family unit. So it's like you're building a foundation with a family unit or for a family unit. So the Four of Wands, when we see it traditionally, looks like a marriage, commitment, that type of thing. So it's something you're building for the future, but it's making something stable. It's like stabilizing something for your future. So we see that with the Four of Wands coming through, and then we have the Nine of Wands coming through. Okay, so... It's like perhaps things have been a little wavery in the, or wavy in the past. You've gone through, with the nine of wands, you've gone through that wounded warrior energy where you've repeated a pattern of some kind. Now, interestingly enough, if you work with the numbers in tarot, we have the nine, which is the card of the wounded warrior, the cycling, the um, energy of going backwards and forwards, nothing stable at all. And then we get the four here which talks about stability. Now, between the four and the nine, there is a five, which says to me there is something that you have been going backwards and forwards in your head about, some sort of mental conflict where you're not really sure of the direction you want to go in. But with the four, it means you're moving to a more stable place from something here that feels you've repeated a pattern. So what I'm feeling here is you could be going into, say, a relationship or a job or a situation that is really, really good for you after many years of cycling a very, I want to say poor, but spirit's not happy with the word poor. So it's, a, it's, it's like you're going into something stable um, after having some sort of erratic experience with something. So maybe you've had really poor jobs or really... Um, unstable jobs or unstable relationships and you're finding the stability here but you've gone backwards and forwards here because we have the seven of pentacles coming through and that means you're manifesting something new here okay seven of swords coming through okay with oh wow seven of cups all the sevens coming through here okay this energy here is really really different all right so I'm feeling like here you're moving into a new time where you are stepping out of some sort of illusion or stepping out of some sort of state that you've been in for a really long time. So you've been living in some sort of world you created within yourself, some sort of illusion you created within yourself that has brought instability. And you're walking into a time of stability and you're now questioning whether it is like the old, whether it's like the new, or whether you are in the right place with that five of wands. So it's like you're going into something that's correct, something that is really good, but you are questioning it based in your past patterns. And I feel this energy came through yesterday in some of the readings. It's like you've been given an opportunity for something new, but you're questioning it because of your past experiences. But the universe is saying to you here, it is stable, it is right for you. And the nine saying what you've left behind is no longer serving you. You've completed this pattern. And that's what I said, the five for me makes me feel like you've gone backwards and forwards between those two numbers. But we have the seven of pentacles coming through with the seven of swords and the seven of swords. Don't sabotage it. 
don't sabotage it. Have you been sabotaging things before? Because you've created some sort of illusion for yourself. And the high priestess is saying to me, you need to stay really within your own gut feeling or your own intuition here to really understand that you're creating something new and beautiful here. You need to leave something behind here. All right, the Wheel of Fortune, very, very nice with the Three of Wands. So it's about focusing on the future. Don't go back to the past. That's pretty much sums it up here. What you created your, for yourself in the past was an illusion. You've lived through the illusion. You've closed that cycle, whatever it was, and now you are moving into more stable times. So if you've let go of a relationship, if you've moved away from something, if you are moving towards something new, this something new is the result of the work you have done. Don't sabotage it. Don't think it's going to be like it's been before because this time around you are building something very, very beautiful here. Okay, so we have the five of pentacles coming through with the five of emotions. It's interesting. I've used this deck so many times. It's so interesting how it happens. The three of swords, so fives and sevens and the sun. I could finish the reading right there, folks. So in the past, things have led to sadness, unhappiness, uh, circumstances that felt like they were empty. You may have been led to feeling quite alone at times or quite like you were never going to accomplish what you needed. And what you're doing here with this five of cups is you're looking back at those. You're looking at this went wrong, that went wrong, this didn't go right, that didn't go right. And you're not focusing on what is good here. It's almost like you expect, it's very victim mentality. It's almost like you're expecting things to go wrong before they've even gone wrong. I see here the three of swords. So it's like you're quite comfortable with the pain. That's what it feels like. It's almost like if something isn't painful for you, if you don't have to work at it, if it's not something that that feels uncomfortable, then you're questioning it. It's almost like you don't think you deserve any better than that. So it may be, for example, we've all done this with the jobs. If you're an empath, you will know and understand what I'm saying. You go through jobs where you're bullied. And you, what happens is you go, I don't want to be bullied anymore. I'll start a new job. And all of a sudden you're being bullied again. And you're like, why is this happening to me? There's a cycle. There's a pattern. But at that stage, in the early stages of it, you don't really understand why you are being bullied until you start to understand that it's actually the energy you are putting out there. And that is really complicated to understand. But then you start to move into jobs where things are different because you start to work on yourself. You start to understand what's been happening. But then you move into a job and it appears to be really good. You feel like you've done the work on yourself and you start to question if it's going to happen again. That is being stuck in a victim mentality. Unfortunately, many of us have got stuck in that pattern because of our childhood. It's an illusion. It's something that you create around yourself and it's self-fulfilling. It's a self-fulfilling thing. So it could be in any realm of your life here. It could be under any sort of circumstances. But what you're doing is you're repeating a pattern. And now you're being given the opportunity to move out of the pattern because of the fantastic work you've done. You're being given an opportunity that is absolutely beautiful here with the sun. Absolutely incredible opportunity. Don't slip back into the self-sabotage because that self-sabotage, what you do is when you go into the next job and somebody bullies you, instead of standing up for yourself, you run away from that too. That is self-sabotage. So it's sort of like this energy of um, jumping before you're pushed. So you may get into the energy of, you know, oh, I, I may not be right in this job. I may not be doing what I need to be doing. Uh, people might not be happy with me. I'm not working hard enough. I need to put in more energy. So you work harder, you do more. And of course, things don't change. And then you go, well, that's it. I'm moving on. I'm done. But actually, what you need to do in the very first place is stick up for yourself. But you don't see that. You don't see it because you think it's outside of you. So 
Again, that becomes that victim mentality where you are blaming external factors for where you are. And this time the universe is saying, you've done the work, you have brought yourself around, you have completed a cycle as part of your karmic journey, you are now ready to move on to the next stage. But when the next stage comes in, you are still thinking about that pattern. You are still going back to this energy here where you are creating the energy of the past. So I feel like here you're almost expecting things to turn bad or to not be good when in fact they are fabulous and you've done the work and you've done such an amazing job that this time around you have pulled in something really beautiful but you still want to repeat the pattern. And the universe is saying to you here, don't sabotage this, it's really good. All right, let's see where we're going with this. All right, so we have the Eight of Pentacles. So it's definitely about work for some of you, definitely the universe acknowledging Six of Cups, the universe acknowledging the work you've done in the past here. You've understood with that Six of Cups how it's influenced you throughout your childhood. Let's just have a look and see. Ten of Pentacles. This is abundant. This new situation is abundant for you. It's full of either financial resources, full of financial support, but the stability is evident here. I'd really like to talk more about that because I think it's really interesting to see now when I look back how we develop these patterns and how we feel comfortable living in those patterns because we learn to identify those patterns as who we are. So you can pretty much see people who've done this because you would have had a string of jobs behind you, quite possibly a string of relationships. And people view that as being really instable or wrong. So people think because they've always been in one stable relationship that they are different to the people who have fleeted between. But the people who fleeted in between are usually very damaged souls but we don't see it that way. We see them as players or, or fraught with problems and issues. When in reality, we've just been lost trying to look for something that we didn't understand was inside of us rather than outside of us. So there is something being offered to you here, whether this is a relationship, a job, a career, it is full of abundance. It has got everything you've ever wanted here. You're in a place to receive because you've let go of the past here. All right, let's keep going. Okay, so we have the King of Wands coming through. Oh, with the King of Swords. And the moon. All is yet to be revealed here. There are two kings in this reading, so I want to see why we have two kings. Could be that you've met your match. Could be that whether it's a job or a relationship, you have come into being with something that matches your energy. All right, so we have the Four of Wands being followed by the Nine of Wands. So I feel like somehow or another you're finding stability after a period of instability. The Seven of Pentacles, Seven of um, Swords, and then the Seven of Cups, for me, talk about Breaking through an illusion, breaking through an idea of who you are, breaking through knowing now that you are worthy of a lot more, st sort of stepping into the energy of really letting go of self-sabotage and embracing something after cutting through an illusion here. You are creating from where you are now and you probably didn't do that before. You probably felt that you had to fight for everything that you got. High Priestess says, trust your gut feeling. The universe is working with you on this one. It's all about the future here. Taking a leap of faith. Beautiful. Okay, so what I see is you moving out of this energy of disappointment, sadness, self-fulfilling prophecy, I want to say here. You've been fulfilling your own prophecy over and over. But you're walking into a time of happiness you're getting a chance at rebirth so it's sort of like you're getting a chance to do it again but this time you get to do it differently there is a definite feeling here of learning from your past understanding how your past has brought you to here understanding your patterns the way you've done things in the past being really aware of who you are and what's happening here is you're creating an abundance now 
I feel like here with the moon card, there's something still hidden from view here. Something that you still haven't discovered about yourself. And I've pulled the justice card on top of that. So we have the moon with the justice card and that beautiful page of swords. There is something about to be revealed to you here. And it's in regard to your ongoing destiny. It's in regard to what is to come. And that page of swords says to me, somebody's seen you. Somebody's been watching you. Somebody's been looking at you. If you are in an energy of they're about to approach you with an offer here. Night of night. Oh, wow. Okay. I feel like whoever I'm speaking to here. This could be romance for you. It could definitely be about love. And for me, it's about a king of wands here. But what I see is somebody has been either watching what you're doing, if you're in a position like this, where you're out in the public, waiting for the right time to approach you with something here. Obviously, some sort of offer, some sort of contract, some sort of opportunity. But it's like somebody has been watching and ready to pounce here. They see you as you've evolved. They've watched you. Somebody has been watching you over a period of time. It has headhunter written all over it here. Somebody is about to bounce in and offer you either a contract or a sum of money to do something here. Whatever it is, you are being seen. You are being seen for what you are offering here. You are being seen for that because you are seeing yourself through this illusion. That's really powerful energy. And there's an offer coming your way. So whether this is some sort of contracted agreement, because it does look like it's abundant, a lot of money, a lot of fame, fortune, whatever it is, something is coming your way here. Something is beautiful. All right, we're going to read a card from the Ascended Masters here. I haven't pulled out this card, this deck for years, actually. Oh, and there it is. Oh, go now. You better go now. <laughs> All right, so that is Serapis Bay. Let's have a look and see what that says. It's time for you to go either away from a toxic situation or toward something desirable. This card signals that is the right time to make your move. The conditions are ripe and perfect and the universe is poised to support your move. Don't you love spirit? It says here additional meanings. Quit your job. Leave a toxic relationship. Move to a new location. Start a new project without delay. Take a vacation. No more excuses. Just do it. And Serapis Bay is an Egyptian god of ascension and a bridge between heaven and earth. That's transformation right there. He's the ultimate life coach who motivates people to take good care of themselves physically, spiritually and emotionally. Call upon Serapis Bay when you need additional energy and motivation to take action. I feel like somebody is coming in here to offer you, to offer you just that. I feel like you've got somebody here who's seen you shine. And whether that's a relationship or whether it is uh, a job opportunity or a career opportunity, they are on your doorstep. They've been watching you. 